God's grace and for God's glory. Now our text speaks of the work of the Trinity in our salvation. All three persons in the Trinity were active in our salvation. Oftentimes, we just ascribe all of our salvation to Jesus alone. But all three persons in the Trinity were active in our salvation. The Father who chose us in electing grace, verse 3 through 6. The Son who bought us on the cross by redemptive grace, verse 7 through 12. And then the Spirit who sealed us by regeneration in verse 13 and 14. All three persons active in our salvation. First of all, the Father who chose us in election. Verse 4 says, According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Now this word chosen, having to do with election, is found 123 times in the Bible, 93 times in the Old Testament, 30 times in the New Testament. Elect is a word that's found 17 times in the Old and New Testament, 13 times in the New Testament. Election is a word found in the New Testament six times. And then elects in the plural is found three times. So over and over and over, you have the word chosen, elected, and so on. When did He choose us? 2 Timothy 1.9 tells us it was before the foundation of the world who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Someone wrote, "'Tis not that I did choose Thee, for, Lord, that could not be. This heart would still refuse Thee, but Thou hast chosen me. Jesus said, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So He has redeemed us at a great cost. I remember in my seminary days, Dr. Ensminger, our teacher, would come in and he would have us to sing, Salvation is free. Salvation is free for you and for me. And that is partially true. Salvation is free to you and me. But salvation was not free. It was purchased for us at a great price. And you know who paid that price? It was the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid a great price to redeem us. And so it was not free. It was purchased for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. But to you and I, it is absolutely free. We pay nothing to have it. We receive it as a grace gift. So He redeemed us at a great cost. And the Bible says we have redemption through His blood. That's the price He paid. He shed His blood for the remission of our sins. But none of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed or how dark the night when the Lord passed through ere He found His sheep that was lost. I could not even begin to describe to you the awfulness of Calvary. I could not imagine how horrific and terrible it must have been to the Lord Jesus to be separated from His Father, to die alone, to die in the eyes of the world as a criminal. And yet, He paid that price. Redeemed. How I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. And through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am.
redeemed and so happy in Jesus. No language by rapture could tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed his child and forever I am. Revelation 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song. This is the saints in glory. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. That word reign is the Greek word vasileo. It's a future active verb. We will reign with Jesus on this earth someday. Then that was the work of the Father. To send His Son to die for us. It was the Father who conceived the plan of salvation. It was the Father who chose us. It was the Father that did all of this for us. Now we turn to the second person of the Trinity, the Son who redeemed us. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Redeemed, how? By a ransom. There was a ransom that had to be paid. Satan had all of Adam's posterity in his grip. And there was a redeeming price that had to be paid before he would let them go. And that price was the redeeming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus shed that blood on the cross, He broke the power of Satan. And Satan now is a defeated foe. And Jesus is the mighty conqueror. He redeemed us. Peter writes in verse 18 of chapter 1, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but received from the vain conversation by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Job, conversing with his three pseudo-friends, said, Deliver him from going down to the pit, for I have found a ransom. I have found a ransom. I'm glad one night I found that ransom. That price that Jesus paid for me. Verse 12 says it's to a great purpose, to the praise of the glory of His grace. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and in sins, for by grace are you saved through faith, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, the unending aeons of time, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace toward us through Christ Jesus. That's the second person of the Trinity. The Son of God who went to the cross and paid the redeeming price. And the third person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit who performed the miracle of the new birth in our hearts and gave us a new nature and delivered us from the power of the old nature. Ephesians 1.13 That's the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, in whom ye trust, also trusted. After ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye, were, after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, that is the down payment, and the, until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. The one who seals us for time and eternity is the Holy Spirit. So there you have the three persons of the Trinity. 
All three active in our salvation. Now there are false views of the salvation. If you meet a Mormon or a Jehovah Witness, they will say to you, the word Trinity is not found in the Bible. And that's true. But that doesn't mean the teaching of the Trinity is not found in the Bible. For it is all throughout the Bible. From the first verse of Genesis through to the last verse of Revelation, you have the Trinity taught over and over and over and over. You see, when God created the horse and the cow and the bird and the giraffe and the monkey, when God created all of them, then He created Adam and He said, Adam, I'm going to let you name all these animals. You put a name on them. See, at this time they existed without a name. So you put a name on them and that name will be what they go by hereafter. So Adam looked at this one with the long ears and the tail. And horse. Today we call it horse. And he looked at the chicken hopping along. And he said, chicken. And today we call it a chicken. But the chicken existed. And the horse existed long before Adam ever put a name or a designation upon them. And the divine trinity in fit existed before we had a theological name to put on God. He is called Elohim. He is called Jehovah Jireh. And we finally got around theologically to putting the proper names upon God. But God always existed whether we knew what His name was or not. Now our theologians have given us the proper names of God. But they will tell you that there's no Trinity in the Bible. Well, you can tell them although the word Trinity is not found, the Bible existed before anybody ever thought of the word Trinity. The Trinity, the divine triune God, existed. And we just put the name Trinity on it because Trinity means three. He's a triune God composed of three persons. And they are false teachers. They teach tritheism, which is belief in three gods. We do not believe in three gods. We believe in one God. But there are three persons in the Godhead and each one is God Himself. You say, I, I can't figure that out. I can't reason that out. You don't need to. God has told you how it is. All you need to do is believe it. Like the infidel, he said, my logic won't let me believe that. Well, your logic will send the infidel down to hell. And God won't pay any more attention to him. Then there's the false doctrine of modelism. That is changing the roles. One of the men in the former ages came up with this false heretical idea that the father, when he begins to act, he changes over into the sun. And then the sun, when he wants to act, he changes over into the spirit. And they taught that the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit were not three persons, but they were just three modem, modems, three models. And one, like an actor on the stage, he may come out and put on the gown of a clown. Go back behind, take that off, put on the, another garment indicating he's a fireman. Go back behind the curtain again, come back around, wear the policeman's uniform. That's heretical. That's heresy. God is three persons. Distinct persons. He doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now there is mystery in the Trinity. We don't deny that it's mysterious. Our poor little 
finite minds can't reach that high up. But someday we'll understand. We'll see Him. We'll know Him exactly as He is. We know Him now. But we'll know Him then without all the mystery. We will know Him. Somebody says, well, how can three be one and one be three? Well, I don't understand all the mystery of the Trinity. I understand the Trinity. I believe it. I preach it. I always have. I always will. But there's much about the Trinity I cannot explain to you because my poor little finite mind only reaches so far. The same is true of yours. We can only reach so far with the and we can only understand what God has chosen to reveal to us. I don't understand how a black cow can give, eat green grass, give white milk, yellow butter, red meat, but I know that it does. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things that are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. There is so much about God revealed in the Bible that nobody has an excuse to be ignorant of what God is like. If you read the Bible, you'll see what God is like. He shows you Himself in the Word of God. If any mind could understand the infinite God, that mind would have to be infinite also. Man does not have an infinite mind. Our attempts at philosophical explanation of the Trinity is an attempt to put the facts of an infinite